Hey, happy day. I feel awesome today. How about you? Do you feel awesome? I, I'm a morning person, so sorry if I annoy people. I know I annoy the kids, so I try to be a little quiet in the morning, but I'm not very quiet, especially on days that I feel awesome. I feel awesome because I just wrapped up a 30-day challenge for my Super Size Your Business group and for a 30-day challenge that I was doing in another group that I'm part of a 365-day challenge. I signed I didn't sign up. I don't even know how I found it, but I was exposed to the day before it started a 365 day challenge of going live, Facebook lives. And today was day uh, 153 of that challenge. Well, in that challenge, the leader added a 30 day mini challenge and we wrapped that up yesterday. But today, you know, I had to do a bonus day because I like bonus days and I also was doing it thought, well, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do it in my Super Size Your Business group and page as well so I can help the people that are coming my world and so I can give back and contribute to and share the process of how you supersize your business because it is indeed a process with the people in my group and start to build my audience in my group because I haven't done that yet. I didn't know until a couple months ago that you should even do that. I guess I've kind of been hearing it, but I didn't get it. The offline world and the online world are very different. However, the really cool thing is people in the offline world should all be doing these things too if they want to supersize and grow their business. I just never was exposed to it. My um, offline business experience and my corporate experience was different, but also applicable to what I'm doing now in the online world in my pajamas. I love, I love hanging out in my pajamas most of the day um, <clears throat> because it's kind of like selling fireworks in the summer was for me. When I was in corporate America and had my businesses on the side, every year my dad would pull us all together, all of my sisters and our spouses and um, some other people, and we would sell fireworks in the summer for about a three-week to four-week period. That's all that you had in the state of Wisconsin during that period in the municipality that we were in. The only time you could sell fireworks when we started doing it was like for a, I think it started out as a three-week period, then it went to a month. And there were all kinds of rules and regulations and guidelines and things you couldn't, couldn't do. And there still are. It's a very regulated industry. Although I've noticed it's gotten pretty lax um, in a lot of states, including Wisconsin. But it's neither here nor there. But we would all come together and sell fireworks. And I loved doing it because my everyday life was so different. My corporate life was so different. It was all very suit and tie. Yes, we women wore, wore ties, sort of. Um, I didn't wear that many because I was kind of always a rebel, but it was very, you know, hair and buns and suit and tie type paradigm. And for me, and I was in quality, quality leadership. So I did a lot of um, interdepartmental things, a lot of processes and procedures and systems and how things work together to make sure that the outcome's continually improving. Love that stuff. I know. Super boring to most people, but I love it. It's really fun for me to look at something and, and look at the process and say, okay, this is good, but if you tweak this one thing, boom, it's going to be great. And bonus, you can automate almost 95% of it. That's the best part. And that's the be most I've learned about going online is there are so many tools and so many systems and so many things that you can do to create things that get done automatically. All the routine things that you do in your business, almost all of them, any repetitive routine thing, unless of course it's serving food in your restaurant or manufacturing your product. And a lot of those things can be automated too, right? But as far as communicating with your customers, marketing, a lot of your sales process, um, all of your accounting and, and things like that and legal and all kinds of things that a lot of business owners don't even think about those things can be dealt with in a really professional way and they can either be automated or outsourced. So that's one of the things that I just absolutely adore and love about online things. And that's why I, I am now bridging the gap between offline brick and mortar businesses and, uh, and how they can make part of their business online to just make their business so much better and so much easier on the owner because that's what it's all about. If you're not, if you're not doing what you love, if you're not working on the parts of your business that you love all the time. And I grew up in corporate America where everybody was pointing out everything that you do wrong. I remember I used to dread doing. I didn't mind 
getting performance appraisals, but I dreaded doing them. I worked for a big corporation once and they decided that you would have to do performance appraisals. It was a new policy for everyone that worked in your department. Well, I had a thousand people in my department and I was supposed to do a thousand performance reviews. Well, I changed up the way I did the performance reviews and how most people focus on everything that people do wrong. I just focus on everything for each of those people that they do right. And I created a system that I could do this. And I actually delegated that work by doing 360 or 360 degree uh, performance reviews. So everybody sent out to a group of their peers that they selected these forms that they would get feedback on. Then all the feedback would come in, it got collated and then summarized. And then we would give that back to the person that was getting the feedback and we would do it as a group. So it became really, really easy to do those performance reviews by delegating, by creating a system and then delegating and then collating and summarizing. And it became actually something that people looked forward to. Normally people dread performance reviews because it's your boss telling you his opinion or somebody else's opinion in your work environment of all the things you suck at and that you should fix because they're broken. Yeah, who wants to hear that, right? And a lot of the things that are broken, according to other people in us, are just things that we don't like to do and don't care about and that aren't important for us to be doing because we should be doing the things we're awesome at. The best leaders, the best teams are created by focusing on everybody's strengths and building on them, not focusing on what people do wrong and tearing them down for that. Boy, that was a little rant. <laughs> so it's important that we find systems and things like that in our businesses. So I got excited yesterday because I heard about something that one of those tools that I discovered about a year and a half ago called ClickFunnels is doing a cool promotion coming up toward the middle slash end of this month, September, not it's August still, but it's in sept next month, let's just say, so we don't need times in here. Um, and, <coughs> <coughs> excuse me, as part of that, I decided, hey, I want to find something cool to do with my Super Size Your Business folks to go along with that. Because how many of us business owners haven't struggled with something, had an obstacle that we thought was impossible to overcome. We had no idea how we we're going to do it. And then all of a sudden we broke through and on the other side, we're like, oh my God, I actually pulled that off. I actually figured this out and did it. I feel that way about online stuff. Like about every other week, I find something stops working or breaks or isn't functioning or um, you have to find a new way of doing it. Like every other week, something like that happens. And it used to really frustrate me. And now I look at it and I kind of laugh whenever it happens because I see it as, hey, this is a new challenge. And if I have to figure this out, somebody else is going to have to figure it out too. So how can I share what I learned about this with somebody else so that they don't have to have any frustration about it either? So I decided I'm going to do, and I'm just finishing a 30-day challenge. Finished it. It was supposed to be done yesterday, but I added a bonus day today because I always do that. I like bonus days. I like bonus things. So as part of this product thing that they're launching, and what it is, is it's asking 30 of the most successful people in their software tool, which is a tool called ClickFunnels, um, if they have lost everything, how would they rebuild their business? What would they do if all they had was a ClickFunnels account and an internet connection? What would they do over the next 30 days to rebuild what they've lost? They've lost everything, their reputation, all of their money, all of their resources. The only sort of resources they have are their brain, what they know about the tool ClickFunnels, and how would they then rebuild and, and recoup what they've lost? I love the concept because how many of us have had to start over? How many of us have lost things? How many of us, how many of us have failed in business before? Yeah. How many of us have shut down businesses before? Yes. And had the opportunity to start over or to, to take another a road because the truth is we can always change anytime we want to. We can always start over anytime we want to. We just decide we make another choice and then we go down a different road or a different path. So often I found in my life where I'm going down a path, going down a road, working on a career, working in a job and thinking 
that I'm stuck, that I have to stay there, that I have to keep doing something. You ever feel that way where you're like, I have to keep doing this. I have kids to feed. I have a house payment to make. I have to do this. And you stay on a path that doesn't make you happy, that can actually kill you if you stay on that path. Um, I know I have. So I wasn't sure what I was going to do for the 30-day challenge because I'm starting it tomorrow. Even though their promo thing isn't going to start till the middle of the month, I'm like, nope, I'm starting it tomorrow. I've got an idea. I've got a 30-day challenge that I'm going to do with this. I'm excited about it. I think other people can be excited about it too. I think it'll help us all to continue on the path of supersizing and growing our business, making our world a better place, which in turn makes the entire world a better place. And that's kind of what I'm all about is how can I help other people to make their world awesome? Because if their world is awesome, they that spreads. That sets the example for other people. If one business owner supersizes their business and succeeds, they have the ability to impact maybe millions or billions of other people. We forget how powerful we are just in the example that we set. Just by being ourself sets the best example on the planet for other people because everybody on this planet just wants to be loved and accepted for who they really are, not who they're pretending to be. Oh, come on, we all pretend to be somebody else sometime. If you go to a fancy smancy dinner, you don't you don't wear your pajamas and you don't probably have a funky weird hairdo. And well, I would probably have a weird hairdo anyway, but I wouldn't wear my pajamas. You do what you need to do to fit into that environment. In corporate America, oh my God, I was like the perfect nerdy quality vice president engineer. I I fit that bill. I filled that role perfectly because I knew what to do. I knew what to say. I knew how to act. I knew how to behave in that situation. Now I know how to work at home in my pajamas and help a lot of people, which is a whole lot more fun than board meetings, <sighs> teaching qualities. I love still teaching quality systems, but teaching quality systems to department heads that really couldn't care less. They're just in fighting and trying to look good and beat their competition, which they see as the other department heads. Oh, don't miss that at all. So anyway, 30 day challenge starting tomorrow. Look for it on my supersize your business page, which is uh, just supersize business. You can go ahead and Facebook it. We're smart. We're business owners. We solve problems. We can find one another on the internet when we've got something that we can help each other out with. So look for it. I'm excited about it. Again, I already have the first day. Okay, this is how I'm going to share my strategy with you. When I decide I'm going to do something, I don't know how I'm going to do it. I just say yes. This 365-day Facebook Live challenge is a huge example of that. I found out the day before this 365-day Facebook Live challenge was starting that it was starting like tomorrow. I think it was April 1st we started. And I, I found out about it on the 31st of March. I'm like, I don't even know how it came by on my stream. It came by on my Facebook feed or somebody sent it to me. I don't know how I found it, but obviously I needed it because I attracted it into my life. I, I came across it. So I thought, well, I'm going to do that. I'd already been doing my daily scare share, which is uh, another daily live I do because I challenged myself early in the year that I got to start doing Facebook lives. I got to start publishing. I have to figure out what the heck I want to do and what my voice is and who I can talk to and who I can help and who I can contribute to. So the best way to do that is by actually starting to talk, starting to do it. So my daughter had pointed out to me this little book called Do One Thing a Day That Scares You. And it's a journal type book with sometimes days it has prompts. The really scary days were blank line days where it doesn't have any prompts and you got to figure out what you're going to do to stretch your comfort zone all on your big own self. So I was doing that anyway. And so I thought, well, I'm doing it anyway. I have alarms set all the time for different things. Do you have alarms set? Some of us, when we get older, we need alarms. That's a lie too, because guess what? When I was a teenager, I needed alarms as much as I need alarms now. We just didn't have cell phones and things back then. So I was already doing it. So when that came up, I just said yes. I, I didn't know what it was about. I didn't know what I was going to do. I didn't know what I was going to talk about. But I just said yes. And today was day 153 of that challenge. Today was actually day 223. No, no, no. 236. Today was day 236 of my daily scare share. So when I came across that, I'd already been doing, you know, 
lives every day for like, I don't know, 70 days. I'm not going to do the math, but for a while. So it just seemed like, okay, well, I can do that. And even though I didn't know what I was going to do, I just said yes. And now I've been doing it. The same is true with my 30 day challenges. They put a mini 30 day challenge in between there. And I just, I said yes. And then I'll figure it out. Well, I heard about this opportunity that's coming up or this cool product that ClickFunnels is launching on the, I heard about it yesterday. And Yesterday, I was talking to one of my coaching students, and he's like, well, how should we get involved with this? How do you think we should promote it? And so I was thinking about it, and I'm like, I know exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to have a 30-day challenge, and I'm going to start it tomorrow. I'm not going to start it. I'm, I'm going to start tomorrow. I'm going to start right away. I'm not going to wait until they begin their promotion and their product launch on the middle of the month. It's actually the 17th of the month. They're doing a summit, the 17th, 18th, and 19th. I'm going to start with my own Super Size Your Business folks starting tomorrow. Well, how am I going to do that? I had no idea. But what I did is I grabbed a piece of paper. This was in a notebook, but I tore it out and I wrote on it 30 day challenge free. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to have a daily video and a, and a daily action stepper lesson, which is kind of my thing, right? I, I share something and then I tell people or ask people to, to actually take one little step to get that done, to move them toward at least starting that thing. Because sometimes the thing I'm teaching them about is a really big thing. For the last 30-day challenge, we talked about automation in one day. We talked about outsourcing in a day. And we talked about delegation in a day. Any one of those things, I think when I wanted to learn about outsourcing, I bought 20 books. 20 books. I took a handful of courses to learn about, about outsourcing. So it's not a little topic. It's a big topic. And I talked about it for under 10 minutes on my... Uh, Instagram TV station, by the way, Super Size Challenge, or it's Super Size. It's just uh, Super Size Business for Instagram. And I've got a TV channel. It's, you know, hashtag IGTV Super Size, and you can find it. And every day, and I started that as soon as I heard about Instagram TV. I'm like, oh my God, you mean you can do something that's longer than, than I think it's 15 seconds before, and you could do it like people were doing it 20 times a day. I'm like, I'm not grabbing my phone and shooting a little thing 20 times a day. Number one, my life is not that exciting, right? Right now, I'm in a, a kind of a lull phase. We all get in phases where we're doing a lot of exciting things. Right now, I'm trying to figure out how to supersize my online business. And as part of that, it's a lot of learning. It's a lot of growing. It's a lot of reading. It's a lot of listening to webinars and researching and going, being on coaching calls and doing coaching calls and figuring it out so that I can help others better and better and better to transition and make the same changes that I'm making. When I supersized my very first business, it it was not on the internet at all. We didn't, okay, old person confession. We didn't really use the internet back then. It was in the very early 2000s. And I had just come out of corporate America where we were still having discussions about whether the internet was really a big deal or not and whether it was really going to stay around. We'd just come off Y2K and survived that. But the internet was still really in its infancy for businesses and business applications. And so I supersized that whole first business with no automation. No, I did a little bit of outsourcing kind of and had contractors that worked and did things, but it was all the old fashioned hard way because there wasn't any automation available. Now there's so much automation available, thousands and thousands of applications are created for our cell phones and for our computers and for our lives and our businesses every year. I think there's, I don't remember how many million applications in the Apple store, the Play store. And in addition to that, there's all kinds of just computer-based applications that we can use to run our businesses and make it easier. So my whole point is I didn't know what my topics were going to be. I just wrote down on a piece of paper and I numbered it one through 30 and then as I was getting ready this morning, the first day popped into my mind and I already knew what the first day was going to be. And what I will do is I will do like I did for the last, excuse me, 30 day challenge. I will grab a stack of 31 note cards and I will brainstorm out after I make a list of, first I'll brainstorm out on a piece of paper, the list of the 31 day topics and what we're going to do each day and then I'm going to tell you right now, that's already going to be probably a, at least a 60-day challenge because once we have the three days of the summit, 
I will break down and do a lesson every day if, based on the, the speakers. And we might even expand on that. Um, if we find a, a strategy that people love and we want to go into deep, we might make it a 90-day challenge. But really what we'll do is we'll do a 30-day challenge initially, but that might turn into a 60-day challenge. I'm seeing that very quickly and easily be able to turn into a 60-day challenge. And then I don't like doing super long challenges. I think even 30-day challenges are too much for most people. But guess what? I don't work with most people. I work with awesome people. And so for them, a 30-day challenge is nothing. It's a drop in a bucket because you can accomplish so much in 30 days that you didn't think was possible. And frankly, all these little five-day challenges and 10-day challenges and even 21-day challenges that people do are just marketing ploys. They're just marketing ploys to get people into their world so that they can sell them a longer-term coaching or bigger product. And I'm not about that. I don't want to do that. I want you to get real value out of the 30 or 60 days and be implementing and doing things to supersize your business. And then if, if I'm for you, then you'll you'll talk to me and maybe we'll ever someday work together on something and some project that you really need done. Otherwise, no, I'm cool with that. I'm busy. I don't need, I don't need a ton more, more to do. And part of my supersize strategy is to automate and provide this information and services to a lot more people so that you know how to do it and you and I don't have to be in the middle of that because if I'm in the middle of that I got to get out of my pajamas I got to go into corporations I got to go meet with executives and talk to their executive teams and show them what they can do what's possible I never tell them what they can do but I will show them what's possible for their organization because almost every organization on this planet is living way below what they're capable of doing, especially with respect to making the world a better place. So there will be a new 30 day challenge for me tomorrow. I will map it out today. I will do a webinar today. I will do, I'm supposed to do something impossible for my daily scare share challenge. So I will, I will be doing something difficult today and I will be doing something impossible. I don't know what it's going to be yet. I haven't figured it out, but I will find something impossible and I will do it. It might be like clean my bedroom or something. Ah! That, that's really scary. That's really funny that I think of that. You know, I could do impossible things in my business and in my life all the time. But when it comes to like cleaning and organizing certain things up, I just don't like doing it. And if I don't like doing it, those things seem impossible to me. So that's it. That's that's my rant for today. I am, I am really actually super excited about this challenge. I didn't know what I was going to do. I knew I was going to do something around that product, but I wasn't sure exactly what it was going to be. And then I thought it popped right into my head. I'm like, I know exactly what I'm going to do. This is my thing. I am like the queen. I'm getting to be the queen of 30-day challenges to make massive transformation in people's lives. So why wouldn't I do that? Why wouldn't I do a challenge for this too? Because how many of us haven't had to start over? Uh, yeah, I just started over a year and a half ago. As part of my divorce, I had to let go of my Italian food manufacturing business. And I had been doing that for 35 years, partly on the side, but for the last 15 years full time. And I had to let go of that business. And um, I found myself in a position of what the hell am I going to do now? Because I'm kind of old, but I wasn't old enough to retire. I didn't even want to retire because I still have kind of a lot of energy. I don't know if you catch that on my Facebook Live sometimes. I try to subdue, which probably isn't going to happen much longer because one of my friends and mentors, Stephen Larson, says, you have to be yourself but louder. So I'm working on being myself but louder. And I knew I needed to make a massive change. And I'd always been curious. I hadn't, I had always been curious about the online world, but or the internet, but I'd never really done much with it. I dabbled a couple of times, but I hadn't really ever had the time and energy to dig into it and dive in and really figure it out. I'd always done it in what it was I needed for my businesses now. So when we got into real estate, I dove into and had to figure out everything about all these different aspects of running real estate businesses. When I got into the Italian food manufacturing business, I had to figure out how am I going to run this business and not have it kill me because I'm spending all my time working in the business instead of on the business. And then in December of 2017, I was like, all right, what am I going to do now? And then in February, I was kind of looking for and exploring things. And I heard about a company called ClickFunnels from my friend Jim Edwards. 
And within a couple of days, I had signed up to become a certified partner and learned that. And I dove into that for the next three months full force and learned a ton about that, became certified. Then I had a major health challenge and had to, of course, overcome that because we always have something going on. And since then, I've been really diving into and helping businesses to transition and not transition necessarily because, come on, brick and mortar businesses were, are always going to be the backbone of the economy and the world. I mean, moving money around. I know banking and finance and all these people are going to argue with me um, that they're what really makes the world go around, but they're not. It's it's not the numbers on a computer screen. It's not the money. It's the actual productivity and value add to the planet that makes the world a better place, that makes a difference, that makes the world go round. And that does not happen online. That does not happen on the computer. That does not happen on the internet. Um, one of my biggest things that I find interesting about the whole funnel world and um, websites and online and the digital world and the internet is people in that world get convinced, they actually believe that that is all that matters in the world, that your digital agency or your funnel is your business. Your sales and marketing is the entire business. Newsflash. Ooh, I got this. Newsflash. No, it's not. It is a very important piece of your business, your marketing and your sales. And do people want what you have to offer? Huge, big piece of your business. It is not. 100% of your business. If you can just market and sell, you do not have a business unless you're selling other people's products, but somebody else has to deliver on whatever it is that you're marketing and selling. What you're offering and promising, there has to be a deliverable of that, right? And we want to be offering people a transformation. So how are you delivering that transformation? Maybe it's through a product like a magnifying glass with cool lights that helps you see. This is a godsend, by the way. I love, I love my magnifying glasses. That's a problem. I... Somebody solved a problem for me by inventing magnifying glasses with cool flashing lights because it's awesome. Um, but I help people understand that you can take what you're doing offline and you can just make it so much easier on you and your employees by adding a few of these things that you might not even have thought about. So my approach is different in that most people that are in that world think, this is the only thing that you have to do. But I have an understanding of, yeah, no, it's a really important piece. You can add it to your business and it will make it fantastic. And that's how you supersize your business. But it's not the whole thing. It's just a way of automating pieces and components of your business, your real world business. I call, I call brick and mortar businesses real world businesses. And I'm sure that irritates some of my internet marketing friends. But it's true. It's true for me. It's my reality. Again, they can have their reality. I get to have mine. All right, I've ranted enough for today. I'm going to get to work planning out and mapping out my third, my next 30-day challenge. I wish you an awesome, fantastic day. And, of course, I'll see you tomorrow with another What's She Up To Now? Because I'm going to be up to a lot, right? Bye. Take care.